Sup squad, it's Sage Banana. Today, I'm going to show you the newest screen upgrade available for the original model Game Boy Advance in the IPS V3 pre-laminated screen kit. Here's what the original screen looks like. It's dim and hard to see all those beautiful Nintendo details. I think she deserves an upgrade. Let's begin by removing the battery cover and batteries. The new screen uses a lot of juice, so double A's would only last it a couple of hours max. I'll be adding a USB-C rechargeable lithium battery to this Game Boy to account for that. Remove these six tri-wing screws and the additional Phillips screw to open the system. Oh yeah, the guts. For this particular kit, I'll only need the board itself, so it's time to remove the peripherals. You'll find three Phillips screws in the board to remove located here. Remove the board and disconnect the ribbon cable from the screen. I should have done so more gently. Time for the kit. The laminated screen requires a specially customized shell that doesn't have a lip around the screen cover region. This is my first time installing one. Note, this is a drop-in screen. You can even get away with installing it without soldering. But this method excludes the new features, so I'll be showing you what and where to solder as we go along. My particular kit came with absolutely no directions. If you're completing this mod via the no solder method, expect it to take five to 10 minutes. If you're looking to unlock features and feel mildly comfortable soldering, give yourself 10 to 20 minutes to complete this mod. Now for a very spicy screen protector peel. I love how the holographic logo looks. Incidentally, the feature of this version that attracted me the most was the pre-laminated screen. In the previous versions of the IPS screens, you had to be careful to align the screen properly. The kits would include 3M foam tape, Here's a catastrophic V2 kit I worked on a couple of years ago. See how the screen is a bit deeper than the protector? The alignment wasn't to my liking, but when I tried to adjust it, the 3M tape held strong and ripped the screen irreparably from its backing. I completely ruined a rather expensive screen. It made me want to rage quit the modding scene altogether. Here's a V1 screen successfully installed. See how the depth of the screen internally gives borders? It's still very beautiful, but I wanted something more... sleek. Anyway, let's drop the laminated screen into the special shell. It's very easy to align because these two bits were made for each other. The ribbon cable included can connect to both models of the original Game Boy. Carefully open the door to the ribbon cable's little dock, and click the ribbon cable into the screen. Next, use some foam beneath the screen and to the left. Since my build is transparent, I want to cut the foam as close to the screen as possible so it won't be obvious later. I taped down the ribbon that I won't be using with heat resistant tape and left the cable that I will use free. I also taped the cable to the back of the screen. If you are opting out of soldering, fast forward to here. There are three points on the ribbon cable marked L, R, and SELECT, and the kit includes three small wires to connect to these points. Since I couldn't find one anywhere, I made you a map of where on the board each one of those cables connect to. Once attached, these will serve as the button guide you'll use to adjust the settings on your new screen. You'll route L to TP9 under the left shoulder button. R will be soldered to TP8 under the right shoulder button and SELECT will connect to TP2, which can be found just above the START and SELECT buttons. If you have flux to add to the board, it's not a bad idea. I don't have any, so I'm just going to go for it. Before teaching myself Nintendo mods, I had no previous experience soldering. I tattoo as a hobby, and despite that, soldering can make me so nervous that my hands are a bit unsteady. It's okay to be nervous. The iron is a dangerous and useful tool, and you're basically mini-welding. 
The Game Boy Advance board has relatively tiny solder points that require precision. If you have confidence in this, great. If you don't, it's okay. The more you do it, the more comfortable you will get with it. Be sure to keep your workspace well ventilated and use proper safety precaution. Once you have all of your points connected, you're in the home stretch. The kit should have included a plastic piece to snap over the ribbon cables and screen. Mine didn't, so I had to make do with some tape as a barrier. I hope it doesn't come back to bite me. Add in the buttons, bumpers, triggers, and pads. They should be pretty simple and satisfying to install. I like to test out my shoulder buttons to make sure they work properly. Gently, so as not to rip out your wires, place the board over the top of the side with the screen and buttons. You may have to carefully push the wires into place so that they don't cover holes or interfere with the buttons. Carefully connect your new screen to the board via the top ribbon cable. Click the side locks into place. Install the power slider cover and make sure it is aligned with the internal slider. Enjoy my fumbling attempts. Remember those board screws from before? Screw them in carefully. The new shell will have new threads and you don't want to push too hard and damage the plastic. Wiggle gently forward and back if you need to make new threads. Now you can snap the back cover into place. Keep your Game Boy level while you do so, so that you don't knock any parts out of place. I forgot to put the Phillips head screw in the bottom of the battery compartment, but add it in before the battery. Add the battery pack cover on top. If it's too tight, rearrange your battery and try again. Now, finally replace the six tri-wing screws, and let's test out our handiwork. Success! The screen and battery work. She got a bit fingerprinty, so let's clean up the screen with microfiber. This display looks fantastic. Hold the select button to pop up the screen options. There are a whopping 15 brightness levels to choose from. The color palettes include LCD, Nintendo's Bright Wash, black and white, and even the original Game Boy Green, which is actually pretty neat. The USB-C battery should charge easily for at least 10 to 12 hours of gameplay. Here's a cross comparison of before versus after. Vastly improved. This screen looks brilliant from every angle. Here it is compared to my previous V1 screen. Both are nice, both required soldering, but only one has adjustable settings and a screen with no internal depth. Just for fun, here it is with an extra bright Game Boy Advance SP. And with a Game Boy Micro. Thank you all for joining me on my first ever full length video. 
I've only ever made short style videos before this, and it was an adventure. I really enjoyed making this. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content. And remember, you can do it yourself too.